Hey y'all, thanks for coming back to my channel to see what I've been up to. Please like and share this video because it does help me to create more videos. And for all the new folks on here, please subscribe and stay connected and up to date with my adventures here in Peru. Okay, so today I wanted to take you guys with me to the river that I live by. The sun here is extremely hot, so living by the river is a huge blessing because showering every day is a must. And the small town of San Antonio oftentimes cuts off the electricity and water. I once had to live with no running water in my casita here for four days. So I had to bathe in the river. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay. We off. Dun, 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 dun. All right, here we go. It doesn't always rain here, but when it does, it's like the greatest thing ever. The weather cools off and it makes it bearable again. And then we have running water until the next streak of hot days. I do love it here though, especially at night when the sounds of the insects becomes like the loudest thing you can hear. It's like a meditation when falling asleep with my door and windows open. And I've been here for a little over five months now. I moved from the sacred valley where the climate is drastically different. The valley is dry and cold most of the time with a lot less rain. Oh, you know what? Let's go this way. I lived in the valley for nine months and uh, before moving out here. So why I moved to the jungle? Great question, let me tell you. Ever since I moved to Peru, um, I have been called to visit the jungle. There was this deep desire to see this terrain and do a dieta and connect deeper to the medicine, to the plaster plant, master, pla master plants. Look at this, woo, so pretty. Basically, woo because the medicine from the jungle is on another level. And I moved to Peru because this is the land of medicine and spirit knew how much my physical body needed the healing here. Oh my goodness, I'm being eaten alive by mosquitoes. That's another great thing about the jungle. The mosquitoes. Got my feet wet and dirty. So the valley wasn't the place my deepest healing occurred. It definitely prepared me for what the jungle had in store for me. So I came to visit Tarapoto, which is the high jungle of Peru with mountain ranges and magical rivers. Oh, look, this is cute. He belongs to Clara, which is the Echo Lodge right here. Ah, the mosquitoes. I came for 18 days back in April of this year to do Dieta with Toei. I have some videos on my channel where I'll share my experience of each of the uh, 10 days that I was in isolation for with the plant alone in my tombo deep in the jungle and with the closest neighbor about a 25 minute hike away. Yeah, it was the most profound experience of my life and it definitely set the foundation of the process that I was later going to burst open for me after I moved here in June of this year. It's so beautiful here. This is the closest entry point to the river. Let's check it out. Ooh. I love how the sun is just peeking through. I used to come here to this spot more often, but now I go to another one, which that's where we're gonna go. That's where we came from. And that's where we're headed. So I completed that first dieta and I returned back home to the brutally cold valley to continue working on a retreat center that my best friend Eric and I were working to open up to the public. And a month later, we did. We opened the retreat center with a beautiful ayahuasca ceremony that... Oh, that now I wish I recorded more of to share with y'all, but in the moment, I was just enjoying the medicine with a close group of friends. Then as the weeks progressed, my body was signaling to me just how much I missed being in the jungle here. And I started to dream about moving here. 
Uh, Spirit was definitely in the background working diligently to pave a road for it to happen. And once I learned about the ayahuasca festival happening in Dos Mundos at a center in June, I just I knew I had to be here for it. Oh, more mud. Yikes. Gotta watch where I'm going. So, in nine days, I packed up all my, my necessities and I sold as many things as I possibly could. And I was on a plane to join the festival at Dos Mundos. I have a full video of what went down after that um, that I'll include here in the link. So check it out. I share all about the healing process that I opened up for myself and what actually happened at the, at the center. So this video, I'll keep it short about my overall process here in the jungle while we walk to the river. Yes, somebody's garden here. They also grow um, grapes to make wine. Really cool. So for those who don't know, I've been drinking ayahuasca for a little over three years now. And when I came to the center to start my dieta, this is where spirit finally burst open Pandora's box of suppressed emotions. Look how cute. And my friend Marina lives down that road. I guess you can't really call it a road. Isn't it gorgeous here? So I had no idea what my journey was about to reveal to me for the next five months until today. When I drank that first cup of ayahuasca and the start of my dieta at the center, I was shown just how much I was suppressing and the endless spiritual work that I was bypassing all in that first ceremony. I burst open the memories of my previous self and I could see how deeply I was lying to myself about all of the spiritual healing work that I thought I was doing. <laughs> it was so painful to see. Yeah, I knew there was no going back and that I finally reached the pivotal point of my journey where the real work had to be done. I'm like trying to record the view above or the view in front of me and myself at the same time. So, so no more running from myself and no more lying to myself. Oh, check this out. This is where we're gonna go. But during my second dieta, uh, I started to feel horrendously sick. My brain was shutting down on me and the plants working inside of me told me that it was time to take control over what I was eating. So after the dietas, I left the center and I moved into my little casita here in San Antonio. It's so pretty here, isn't it? There's a video that I'll add here where I show the casita and um, I live in the area. So once I moved in, I began the transition out of veganism into a carnivore lifestyle. And the biggest mistake I did was introduce dairy. Yeah, such as cheese, heavy cream, butter, back into my life right off the bat. That fucked me up. And after three weeks of inflammation increasing in my body, I knew I had to cut dairy out for good. It was really sad. And then another week later, I figured out I was battling a nasty candida overgrowth that I have been living with the majority of my life. So cute, check this out. Yeah, a new baby. Ever since I was a child, I had digestive issues, uh, which contributed to the eating disorders I battled as a young adult, and which later led to severe malnourishment that I am now healing from. This is why I am now eating only meat and salt because meat is the most dense, nutritious food that I can find. But I'll talk more about the dangers of candida overgrowth and how I figured out what doctors all my life couldn't tell me in another video. This video will keep it about how the jungle saved me. <laughs> this is one of my favorite streets in the back part of town. So after weeks of researching how to save my body from this candida overgrowth, I began a very strict dietary protocol that targeted this bacteria in my gut. I couldn't do the carnivore diet like I thought I should before leaving the center because it just wasn't easily accepted and digested in my stomach. So 
I had to detour and introduce foods that targeted the candida. I was eating only, cruci only cruciferous vegetables, lots of garlic, ginger, turmeric, cinnamon, cloves, fish, and very, very little red meat, maybe like small little piece once a week. And for those who know what keto is, know that this is not a diet you can achieve ketosis in. Okay. Let's see, where are we right now? We got this, and we got that. Come over here. Okay, but I stayed positive and knew that this was only temporary until the candida overgrowth was completely gone and back to my normal amounts in my gut. Then I was going to go back to eating carnivore to allow my body to work in ketosis. That was the plan. That is the plan. That was the plan and it worked. Okay, long story longer. This was a long protocol and a very difficult one. Check this out. People swimming. So let's just get set up somewhere. Yeah. This looks like a good spot to sit down. So pretty here. So as I was saying, this was a very long protocol and a very difficult one, especially on my gut, because at this point I was also battling rheumatoid arthritis, leaky gut, SIBO, and IBS. And due to the damage of the candida overgrowth that I wasn't aware of for 20 plus years, that's crazy. So the candida did some serious internal damage that I'm now only healing 20 some years later by knowing the root cause of all of my autoimmune diseases, which was the candida overgrowth. So crazy how all the doctors kept misdiagnosing it. So to really kill off the candida overgrowth, there are three things I knew I had to do for it to work successfully. Because candida is a type of gut bacteria that we all have in our bodies. And it's a type of bacteria that creates this biofilm, which is a nasty, slimy-like goo that uses it, this goo as a protective layer to live and multiply in. Ah. I'm being eaten alive by mosquitoes here. So this biofilm grows far past the gut and gets into every inch of the body with time if it's not treated. This happens when we have mostly an acidic gut microbiome. And if we do nothing about this acidic environment, the candida will overgrow to dangerous amounts. And this is, ah, and this is how most autoimmune diseases begin. Wow, I did not choose a very good spot. So. The first thing is to starve the candida, which means not feeding it the food it likes, like sugars and carbs. The second thing is to target the candida with things that kill it off, such as cruciferous vegetables, garlic, ginger, etc. as well, and to take an antifungal supplement. This is where I discovered boric acid, or borax. Yes, it is a cleaning solution that is sold in hardware stores across the world, not in pharmacies. <laughs> Yet, what most people have no idea is that borax and boric acid, which is basically the same thing, one is just a little bit more potent, they're actually 100% naturally derived from the earth. So, ah, my, my arm is falling off now. So it was proclaimed to be poisonous by the government in the 1980s when a doctor tried publishing his studies of how he was healing people from arthritis, osteoporosis, and many other autoimmune diseases, and yes, even candida overgrowth. Within like a month, it was crazy. The results were super fast. So obviously the government couldn't allow such a cheap solution to such diseases because it's not profitable, okay? It's just not profitable to cure osteoporosis in six months or arthritis in two months with borax because borax is incredibly cheap. So instead, of course, they wanted to sell the people on the idea that autoimmune diseases are not curable and to sell pharmaceuticals to the patients for the rest of their life that only helped with symptoms, but also came with many, many, many side effects. Okay. <laughs> Gotta love how big daddy government is looking out for us. So I began taking boric acid every day as part of my protocol with the proper diet and the antifungal. Um, there was a third crucial step in this process. Replenishing the gut microbiome with good, healthy bacteria. 
probiotics taken with digestive enzymes. Okay, this is crucial, absolutely crucial. You have to replenish the gut microbiome so that the healthy bacteria can eat. So I found this really awesome natural pharmacy here in Tarapoto that makes probiotics and they sell them in little bottles that I keep refrigerated. So I was drinking one of those each day. And these probiotics are like legit, okay? They, they make them in the lab, in, their, in the pharmacy itself, and it's very natural and it's awesome. So within, within the first week of drinking the boric acid, my rheumatoid arthritis started to reverse and my inflammation in my body dissipated. And after 56 days of full protocol of the diet, of the boric acid, the probiotics, and the digestive enzymes, I was almost in perfect health. The only thing left was figuring out how to heal my leaky gut, IBS, and SIBO now. The Candida protocol I created for myself definitely helped with the leaky gut and the SIBO symptoms. But my stomach was still always bloated, just no matter what I ate, and I walked around looking like I was nine months pregnant all the time. I gained quite a bit of weight after the center as well. I think those three weeks of eating dairy is to blame. <laughs> so this was a mentally difficult process for me as I was still battling severe body dysmorphia. Every time I looked in the mirror, I was just, uh, I was just so sad. So four days before I had hit 60 days of my protocol, I decided this was the time to return back to ayahuasca. I haven't drank any medicine in over three months, ever since leaving Dos Mundos, and my body was telling me it's time. So exactly 20 days ago, I finally had a ceremony with my curandero Bruno after the retreat, after the three months of, per of a break. This is all so recent. Yet the last five months just feel like a full decade with the hell that I've been in trying to heal my body and come back to myself. Oh my God. So that ceremony on no November 9th revealed why I was not digesting my food well. Because you see, going through all this trial and error with figuring out what no doctor could ever diagnose for me and trying to heal my body, I was also exhausted and severely fatigued. Like most days, I couldn't even get out of bed. So what did I do? I was consuming content on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Yeah, I was on my phone all the time in bed. I ended up spending hours each day just scrolling on these sites. My number one addiction was TikTok, where I convinced myself that I needed to stay informed on what was happening in the world. Yeah, big time lying to myself right there. So I'd spend majority of the day resting and scrolling and ayahuasca showed me that this was part of my diet that my body was not able to digest on top of all the vegetables i was eating at the time yeah vegetables my body does not like either my leaky gut was so bad that any healthy vegetable i was eating such as avocado lettuce zucchini eggplant they all sound healthy right and even cucumber it wasn't being digested because i was consuming so much content i could see that the food wasn't the only thing that the body was working to digest. What we watch, read, hear, and who we surround ourselves with is also food that the body needs to digest. And the content I was consuming, I knew could have been completely fake. And this is why the body couldn't digest it as food. I was also in just so much physical pain in that ceremony because what I ate that morning wasn't moving through me at all and my stomach was so bloated and inflamed. I was literally feeling like I was dying. Like, that's not an exaggeration. I was legitimately dying in that ceremony from pain. My stomach was in so much pain and misery. But the most terrifying part of the ceremony was seeing how all the social media consumption was disconnecting my body, mind, and soul. I saw myself as an empty vessel. Yeah, like a zombie, just going through the motions of my daily routine, you know? My consciousness was far away somewhere and my body was left alone to slowly decay. I saw this was the reason I was bloated. My hair was falling out and there was no personality left inside of me anymore. I could see how in a few short months, I lost my sense of humor, my joy, my playfulness, and creativity. I was completely disassociated from my reality. And once I drank the first pour, 
I knew something was off, like something really wrong. I've never had an, a ceremony like that where after the first pour, I just felt so disconnected. Mother Ayahuasca didn't even want to connect with me. She showed me an image of a friend coming to visit me, yet I wasn't home. And the friend was like, um, okay, like, what am I doing here? And she said, this is why I didn't come to you because you're not in your body and you haven't been in a long time. And I was like, so freaking scared. That ceremony, I repented so hard before her. I told her, I'm so sorry for taking you for granted. I was under the false impression that if I drank you, you're obligated to show up. And she responded with, there's no one for me to show up for. You're not here. So I worked so hard that ceremony, touching my arms and legs, rubbing my face and tummy, saying, I am coming back to my body. Thank you, Ayahuasca, for bringing me back to my body. I claim ownership of this body. I take responsibility of this temple. I am here to take ownership of what is happening in my body. I swear to take care of you, body. And I was basically saying that on repeat the entire ceremony as I saw myself from a long tunnel trying to come back into my body. It was actually traumatizing. Like the whole experience was so terrifying, yet it also saved my life. So I ended that work with a commitment to fast for a week, to allow my body to integrate and let my gut rest from having to digest all this food. I ended up fasting for only 76 hours, however, because my body started to give up on me. And the medicine still working inside of me said that I'm too malnourished to continue my fast. Surprise, surprise. So I broke my fast with a cucumber. And once again, that instantly bloated me. I figured I need some veggies to give my gut something easy to digest. But after three days, my stomach was more bloated than ever. Okay, this is just vegetables that we're talking about. I'm sorry, my arm is falling off. And on the fourth day of eating vegetables, I finally realized that I needed to cut out all the vegetables and see if eating only meat and salt would help. So now I'm on day 11 of eating only beef and salt and I feel fucking incredible. And five days ago, I sat in another ceremony, exactly two weeks apart uh, from the first one that I did 20 days ago. And I had the most profound ayahuasca experience of my entire life. I ate only meat and salt the week leading up to this last ceremony. And I couldn't believe how good the medicine worked inside of me. I was giggling so hard thinking to all those shamans telling people not to eat red meat and, not, and no salt before drinking ayahuasca to have a deep experience with the medicine. And here I was only eating red meat and salt. And I had the most powerful ceremony of my life. Don't listen to anyone other than your own body, you guys. <laughs> I learned. I learned through a lot of experiences that other people don't actually know what's best. So 11 days into my meat only lifestyle, I can finally say I have my health back, truly. Of course, there are still some issues I'm healing such as nerve damage and brain cell damage, but with every day, I do feel myself getting better and better. And not even two weeks ago, I could barely put two words together because the brain fog was so heavy. And now 11 days later, okay, 11 days later, not even two weeks later, I'm creating content again. <laughs> I, it's a miracle. The meat is so nourishing that I eat as much as I want and one meal a day lasts me until the next day before I get hungry again. I can feel how happy my gut is feeding off of all of the nutrition the meat, the meat is providing it. And my brain is functioning better than I ever thought is possible. So, of course, there is so much more to the whole story of how the jungle saved me and brought me back into my body, but this video is already getting long enough and I'll save all the other details for my next videos because I do hope to share more about my candida overgrowth, um, you know, the struggle that I overcame with all of that and why I decided to become a carnivore. So I hope to also share more of my insights from the last two ceremonies I did and what the future holds for me. 
And as always, thank you to everyone who watches my videos. Please like, share, and subscribe as this really does help me to continue to create more content for y'all. So much love and stay tuned for my next video. And now, maybe I'll just show you a little bit more of my, of the river, actually. I don't want to say goodbye just yet. So this is a really awesome place to go swimming because over there, it is actually like pretty deep. I'm 5'1 and I can't touch the bottom. Okay. And if we go further down this road here, this is where my favorite swimming hole is. Not much of a hole, but there's some rocks there that I sit on and I shave because it's so much easier and nicer to ground while you're shaving. Ooh, look how pretty the sun is hitting the mountain. Y'all ready to see this? Check it out. It's even got a little beach down here and the river is so loud, it's all, almost deafening. So this is my little spot where I come to swim. Yes, it's been so awesome having you on my walk. So now is goodbye. Ciao, ciao.